it's your crush Tommy. I'm so excited. Today we're bringing you another video from our Pro Fortnite Analysis Series, What Would You Do? Where you get a chance to think about, you know, what you would do in a tough situation, and then we show you what the pros actually did and why. So in this video, we'll be looking at our NA East Chapter 2 Season 4 Trio FNCS Champions reverse to K, Day, and Mero, who may be on their way to another Trio FNCS victory pretty soon. So let's take a look at this fantastic performance they had at the recent Trio Cash Cup. Are you guys ready for this? I know I am. Let's get this going. So Reverse and his team have five games left with only 50 minutes left in the cash cup. They're doing all right, but as always, they want to win the entire tournament. So they load into a game and land at Dirty Docks, which is one of the best spots to really land at in the current season. But in this game, it didn't turn out that way. They happened to be uncontested, but even that wasn't enough to guarantee them to the greatest loot. Reverse manages to find a decent loadout after upgrading to a scar, but Day and Mero, on the other hand, didn't find anything too good. So after looting everything in the POI, Mero notices the teams at Steamy Stacks are fighting. But the first zone had already pulled to the other side of the map. This left him with two options, as well as leaving us with the question, what would you do? Would you go for a risky fight with your team at Steamy Stacks to hopefully score some extra loot? Or would you just play it safe and rotate the zone with the loot your team currently has? Okay, so we gotta remember guys that they do have four extra games, which is just way more than they need for the amount of time they have left. So the risk of elimination may be worth for the loot they might receive since they can just afford to waste a game if that's what it really comes down to. Now they can just play it safe and rotate the zone, but with the loot they currently have, they wouldn't exactly be playing it safe. They would just be setting aside their problems for later meaning they could just potentially waste more time if it doesn't work out later in the game than if they are eliminated right now when it's just early in the match. Plus, they could always just disengage if necessary. So they decide to take the fight. So they all get into a truck from Dirty Docks and quickly head on over to Steamy Stacks. As they're on their way to Steamy, they notice one player there has just been rebooted, and they head into the fight with confidence. Reverse starts off the fight with a nice crack on one of the opponent's shields and continues to apply pressure and peace control while Day and Mero head into the fight for some more aggressive plays. They manage to get two eliminations, then notice that there are still two more players alive from the other team. So they decide to not get greedy and disengage while they can since the storm had just entered steamy stacks and they already got some extra loot from their previous two eliminations. All right, let me ask you this. Do you guys want to learn how to play like some of the best pros in the Fortnite scene? Then you guys got to check out ProGuides.com where we have master courses from incredible Fortnite players like Clicks and Mongrel. Mongrel and Clicks themselves, guys, will walk you through what makes them so good at Fortnite and how you can play just like them to win more games. So after leaving steamy stacks and safely making it to the safe zone, they begin rotating to the next circle. After a while of running, they find themselves heading towards a huge fight full of multiple teams and bony burbs. Leaving us with the question, what would you do? Like, would you head into the fight with your good loot and just try to get some extra points? Or would you play it safe and rotate around the fight to play for the end game? Well, normally it would be a good idea to rotate around the fight, but remember man, they do have four extra games with not much time left in the tournament and they want to go for first place. So Reverse and his team head into the fight and they play it slow by just staying back and going for sprays to try to crack the enemy shields. The fight gets a little sketchy for a second as they start getting surrounded, but they play together and stay calm with good comms as they take control of the fight and begin stacking up some eliminations. The fights go on for some time, pausing randomly as teams begin disengaging for the third zone. But they play safe and as a team, right? And ultimately, leading to the end of the fight with four extra eliminations and some placement points that got along the way. All right, guys, so later on in the same game during the fourth zone, Reverse's team positions themselves on height above all the other players next to the edge of the zone in order to hopefully pull half and half. But unfortunately, it goes to the other side of zone. So while looking for the safest way to rotate, they notice a metal tarp right in front of them with no players rotating from it. Okay, so if you were in their position, would you build over the tarp and go to zone in case, you know, opponents are waiting inside? Or would you break into the tarp for some extra protection while rotating? All right, so the answer here, and I mean like right here, is to break through the tarp for some extra protection, and I know that doesn't sound very safe. But now that it's getting into the end game, they need to be saving as many materials as possible. And using previously built tarps is just a very smart way to do exactly that. So the guys drop down to low ground, they build to the tarp, and quickly break their way into it. 
they somehow get extremely lucky, man, and they find loads of extra materials and loot that they very much need it. Also, as a quick note in case you guys ever just find yourselves in a similar situation, it would have been a lot safer if they shot a couple of walls of the tarp before building to it. This way they could see if there were any enemies inside that could possibly eliminate them before getting too close. Either way though, like it was just a great play and they got a lot more from the tarp than expected. Once they get into half and half, they base up on low ground and attempt to make a play on the enemy base that's next to them. They claim their opponent's wall, they go for some shots, and unfortunately, Meryl takes some heavy hits and goes down. Okay, so if you're in this situation, what would you do? Like, would you leave Meryl and just play the rest of the game as a duo, or would you attempt to revive him? Reverse decides to quickly close the edits and just throw Mero into their own base to revive him while Day tries to fight off the enemy team. It was looking good as he started reviving Mero, but it didn't really work out the way they hoped. A third party team sprayed Day from behind while he was fighting and took him out. Reverse tried to get Day to revive him after recessing Mero, but it was just too risky since the third party team pushed him to finish off Day and grab his loot. So was the play to revive Mero worth it? Yes, since Mero did have a legendary RPG as well as more materials than they had. Also, they did end up maxing out their materials as well as getting some extra heals from Day and eliminated opponent's loot pile that came from fighting off the team that pushed. So even with all of this, man, it still would have been nice to have Day alive with them after the rest, but you know, it was just a good day since it would have worked out perfectly if there wasn't a third party there to beam Day in the back. Just make sure you guys are being careful, man, while going for in-game plays on nearby teams. It could get very hectic very, very fast, just like it did here for Reverse's Trio. All right, push your crunch time. It's time for the question of the day. Today, we want to know, who are your favorite Fortnite pros? Let us know in the comments down below because you already know we check out every single one. So Reverse and Meryl continue playing out the end game together and do very well. But around the third moving zone, Reverse begins running out of mats fast and he spots a downed enemy on low ground beneath him. If you were in Reverse's situation, like considering the amount of materials he has, what would you do? Would you just drop to low ground and finish off the enemy for their materials or would you play safe and stay with Meryl? Well, the best option here, and I mean like right here, is to play it safe and stay with Mero. And I know earlier I said not to leave your problems for later, but in this situation, Reverse has no idea how many players are on low ground, where the other players are, or how many mats the down player even has. So chances are the player was on low ground because they ran out of materials themselves, meaning there was a chance Reverse could have just received 150 materials if he went down there, which is not really worth the risk of elimination at all. So playing with Mero and attempting to find some eliminations together would be a better option. So after deciding to stay away from low ground, Reverse peeks beneath him from a different angle and notices a fight in front of the down player. It's possible that he could have just grabbed the down player's materials and just made it back up alive, but there also could have just been more opponents behind him that he never checked for, which is something that he could have done in order to receive the materials. But either way, it was a very good call to not go for them and just play it safe. Unfortunately, Reverse ran out of materials soon after and he was boxed up and eliminated by a team on this layer. I really wouldn't blame him, you know, for not going for the down player's mats. Instead, this could have been prevented if he stayed next to Mero and away from the enemy walls. But it's not always easy to think of things like this in a tough game situation. So after Reverse was eliminated, the rest of the game was all up to Mero. He found himself an elimination that refreshed a little bit of his mats. And he still had the golden RPG from earlier that he had when Reverse revived him. There really wasn't too many players left alive. And after, you know, getting the refresh, he pops a pepper and he notices a couple other opponents next to him fighting for height. This leaves him with two options. And our last question of the video, like what would you do here? Would you just crank up for height or would you drop down to avoid fighting? The answer right here, my friends, is to crank up for height. This may seem like a psycho play, but considering the fact that he has an RPG and he's a solo, cranking up for height would be a lot safer than just staying on low ground without too many materials, especially since low ground as a solo in team modes usually ends with height focusing you. So Meryl safely builds over his opponents with pepper speed and successfully claims height, leaving with him 150 materials and one rocket. He then finds himself another refresh and uses everything he has to his advantage to fight the last team alive. And after a tough game with multiple good decisions made, Meryl clutches the win, leaving the team with a huge victory royale. And the victory earned themselves sixth place by the end of the cash cup, which is definitely a placement to be proud of whether they were going for first or not.
All right, bunch of crits on me. Let's go for a quick recap before this video ends. Don't be afraid to take any aggressive play opportunities if you need some extra loot or even if you're just going for a big point game. This can definitely give you guys the point boost that you're looking for if played safe and it's very much worth it if you can afford a wasted game. Also, old enemy tarps can be used to give you extra protection during rotation without using too many mats and even give you some extra loot along the way. And don't forget guys, if possible, throw your down teammates into a base for just a quick revive attempt. That teammate could just go on to clutch the win for you, you never know. Another thing to remember man is don't risk just going for random materials on low ground if you don't have any information, especially not without your teammates. And lastly, to find your sub next to hide as a solo, it might be worth just cranking up for it as long as your opponents aren't already there, hey, it can earn you the win. So putting yourself in the shoes of a pro is an incredible exercise and it can really teach you a lot about how the pros play. And I really hope today's video really helped you guys out to learn how to deal with tough situations similar to the ones that we just talked about. Listen, I believe in you guys and don't let anything stop you. You gotta keep going. Persevere, man. Make it across that finish line. If you guys like the video, like the video or subscribe to the channel and make sure to connect with me on my Instagram at yourmotivationguy. Keep going. I'll see you soon.